it often uh, has been said that you, you should probably be an introvert if you're a dentist because uh, so much of what you do uh, is uh, typical of what introverts tend to do. Uh, though we have some uh, extroverts in dentistry too. Uh, hopefully I'm an ambivert. Uh, that means kind of in between. Shalom, come on up here. Now you know you're not allowed to do that unless I tell you, okay? Down. Good dog. He seems to enjoy following commands. Shalom, sit. Good dog. Lie down, Shalom. Lie down. Lie down. All the way down. Go ahead. Lie down. Well, lie down. I have come to feel that almost everybody has some place, some physical situation that gives them a spiritual lift of some kind. And uh, the countryside, such as what you see here, uh, has a way of, uh, of calming my soul. As a matter of fact, one time I was planning to be a naturalist because uh, that seemed to fit, but uh, I found dentistry, which then became uh, a second love of mine. Oh, honey, let your eyebrows mingle with mine. We'll have a little lovin' in the good old summertime. Now cuddle up a little closer, let your arms around me twine, oh, honey. Let your eyebrows mingle with mine any old time as long as you're mine, oh, honey. Dad was unlike the other dentists in town, other parents in town, other people in town. He was radical. I mean, he was always testing this and pushing the envelope on that, and a lot of that was over the top for me. I wanted Dad to be a lot like the other neighbors. Years ago, I had decided that be, it would be nice to take a, a little time to uh, travel in a mobile dental unit into the uh, countryside. And I was going to have my family, when we went on vacations, uh, act as dental assistants and uh, treat people that way uh, free, uh, gratis. Uh, I knew that West Virginia Public Health had uh, mobile units, and uh, I called. They were all broken down. But I felt that I could do that at the farm. We would ask for a, a donation, maybe 15 or $20 a visit. Dr. Donald Law and I have a traditional type of dental practice in the city of Wheeling. I practice on Saturday afternoon here at Viewpoint. Yes, this is Becky with Dr. Ryback at the Viewpoint Dental Clinic, and we got a message that you needed a dental appointment. Well, right now we do have a pretty long waiting list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do that then. Mm -hmm. Sure. I call them every Thursday, the people that are scheduled that week. What teeth are bothering you, Bob? Uppers. Which one? I let them know that there is a waiting list, probably about 230 people. We'll just take them all out. They have to come out anyway. That's what I appreciate. <laughs> all the uppers. My son had lost a filling, and he woke up one morning, and he was just crying. And he had to have um, a root canal done with a cap. And they told me at his regular dentist it would be $1,200, and we didn't have any insurance. So um, Dr. Ryback worked on his teeth here. It took about three hours. If you can hang on to any of your lowers and it looks like you should be able to, I would do that rather than have them out. I was amazed because I never thought anyone could care about my kids the way, you know, I did. We haven't won any recipe awards for <laughs> the things we use here. And we're finished with this. Ever since then, I thought, how could I repay him for what he's done for me? And then I found out that he needed someone to volunteer on the telephones to make appointments for him. It's interesting that most of what I do there are extractions. And uh, the first thing that I gave up in my regular practice back in the early 50s uh, was extractions. I felt a little like uh, a mortician. I guess I have a good feeling, though, about what I'm doing at the clinic, even though that's mostly what I do, is because the people that are coming there 
usually have suffered uh, long-term pain. That used to be Murphy's, five and ten. Of course, coming up here to the left, it used to be Stone's for probably 50 years or longer. I mean, a whole lot here other than beer joints and banks. I don't know where people get money to put in the bank, but... <laughs> There used to be steel mills here, coal mines, you name it. It, it shut, just shut down. So, of course, we all got laid off. I'm not sitting nowhere while I'm taking a little ride. There's too many robberies, rapes, you name it, around here continuously. I told you that's how I decided I needed false teeth. <laughs> I didn't do it on my own. Uh, just trying to get into the house. And my wife was coming down the steps to open the door, and a few boys decided to use me as a batting cage. All right, Brenda, it's your turn. Just at least I don't think they'll be hard to take out. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I'm just here to get some work done on my team. I want to get it taken care of because I heard that I could get sick or die. I'm, you know, I'm trying to live. And plus, if it gets too bad, then they'll have to pull the tooth. And I don't want to walk around without a front tooth. You're an old hand at this by uh -huh. now. You had 32 minus two teeth removed. That makes it about 30 teeth uh -huh. already. We better do a good job here, or you'll know the difference, won't you? I have no problem with going to the dentist. I just don't, I don't like needles. And they said I gotta get a needle put in my mouth today, so I'm kinda hesitant about that. The trick here is to relax, let your muscles hang loosely through your nose, take five deep breaths, real deep. Try not to tighten up. And if you tell me this is more uncomfortable than it was to have your tongue pierced, I think I'll quit dentistry. <laughs> 